Hello. I'm Atuba John. Now, today is Good Friday. Praise God. Now, it's Good Friday, not a bad Friday. Because it is today that we remember how Jesus brought life to us. He gave us life by dying. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call for our daily bread. Now, I want you to release your faith. And, and because today is Good Friday, everything that is owed you, it's time to call it in. Join me right now, even as we declare. Say, Father, I receive today everything that will make my life good. I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's a day of celebration, not a day of mourning. You see, because the one we mourn, we, we want to mourn, he himself knew that he wasn't going to lose his life. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, the reason he decided to die was because he knew that he wasn't going to lose his life. His faith in God was that strong. And you need to understand this. And that is what we call faith. Faith was not just going to the cross to die. Faith, because faith must be in the word of God. And faith must produce, or faith must come from a place of hope. No one hopes to die. No one is hoping, ah, I'm just hoping I'm going to die. No one hopes to die. See? So death itself cannot be hope. So if there is no hope, remember faith is the substance of what you are hoping for. So the death cannot be something you're hoping for. Jesus couldn't have died in that faith, hoping to die. But rather, what was the faith upon which Jesus gave himself? I will tell you, Jesus gave himself with the hope of eternal life, with the hope of what God has said, that your death will give them life. And then, not just that your death will give them life. Now, how will his death give us life? He originally, I love this part of it, praise God. He originally was the one God ordained to administer life to us. But then, he cannot administer that life because we were bound to death. Are you getting it now? So he, to administer life to us, he has to first of all free us from the bondage of death that we trapped ourselves even from Adam. And how was he going to do that? He wasn't going to do that by coming and claiming a superhero. No, he was going to do that by paying the price. Now, Alabradisha. Jesus truly, truly was not necessarily supposed to come as a man to the earth. The reason he came as a man is so that he can pay that price for us. We sinned as men. Adam sinned as a man. So if that sin must be paid for, it's a man's blood that must be paid, that must be the payment for that sin. So that's why Jesus had to come as a man. But then, he was also the one God has ordained to give us life. Now, if he's the one God has ordained to give us life, then how, if he dies, how would he give us the life? So here was the confidence that Jesus walked in, and that was his faith. That was what the Father told him. That was where his hope was in. Was in. Because he has the ministry to administer life to us. And now, he has to first and foremost free us from the bondage of death 
by giving his life to die for us. So he came as a man, submitted himself to death with the hope that God will raise him up from the dead. And God did exactly that, praise God. So Jesus didn't go to that cross hoping he was going to lose his life, thinking he was going to lose his life. The Father had told him already, I will raise you up. But I need you to give your life for their sake. And he said, yes, sir. Same thing with Abraham. Why was God so pleased with Abraham? Not just because Abraham was willing to offer Isaac, but it was the faith in the heart of Abraham that pleased God. What was that faith? Abraham was ready to obey God to kill Isaac, but he had enough faith in his heart that Isaac was not going to lose his life. How do you say that? How do you even think that that's what faith is? Why? Because he had hope in everything that God had said to him concerning Isaac. See, God had told him, in Isaac shall your seed be. Are you getting this now? And this is why we celebrate Good Friday. So Jesus knew he had the ministry of giving us life. The same one who asked them, and only him had that ministry. He said this in John chapter 17. He said, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. That was his ministry. Not as a man. He didn't give anybody life as a man. He, no, he, no, he, he, of course he raised Lazarus from the dead, but that's not the giving of life. The life he was, um, he was, the life he was, he was commissioned to give is eternal life. That's not what he gave Lazarus. He couldn't give, he couldn't enter into that ministry when he was on earth. He could only enter into that ministry after he sits, he goes, you know, Many of us don't understand these things and that's why we live our lives the way we do. So Jesus looked at his disciple one day and says, Hey guys, I'm going away. I'm going back. Going to where? I'm going back to where I came from. I'm going back to my full ministry because it is in that place I can carry out my ministry over your lives. You want me to be with you? Yes. But you see, I, 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 can't, I can't function in my ministry. So I've got to go. So he says, it is better for you that I go. He didn't go and just forget about everything. No, he stepped into that real priesthood ministry. Now from that place now, he administers life. And how does he do it? Through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, he died that we might live. Listen to me. This is what you should gather all your children together and explain to them. That the, when you hear about Jesus, this is what you should understand about him. He's not just one man that came to save the world from sin. He also came to save us from death. How does he save us from death? By giving us eternal life. Question, have you received eternal life? That's the life, that's the ministry of Jesus that is taking place today. He couldn't carry out this ministry while he was on earth. There was no way he could carry out that ministry. You see, because a man, when, when he was on earth, he could only administer life in this realm. So he needed to go back to the place that the Father had given to him from the foundation of the world. And sitting in that place, now he can administer life to whosoever will come to me. He said, no man comes to me except my father who sent me draws him. Mm. And he wasn't just referring to his, his ministry on earth. He was referring to the real ministry. So guess what? It is the father it is the father who knows those hey, hey, who knows those whose names he has written in his book of life 
and then he begins to direct them even today to Jesus. And when they meet Jesus, they receive eternal life from him. Brothers and sisters, we need to up our mindset where eternal life is concerned. Eternal life is not just a, a special life that, hey, it's a special life. It's the God kind of life. It makes us superhumans. I'm telling you the truth. It makes us superhumans. We, when we receive eternal life, we go out of the earthly human realm. And, and we begin to function in God's realm. And here's the point. What sustains eternal life? The word that comes out from God's mouth. Now that's something you need to understand. It's not the words from the scriptures. It is the words that come out out of God's mouth. So the fuel of eternal life is fellowshipping with the Lord. And in fellowshipping with the Lord, words must be coming from his mouth every day, every time. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, not once a week, not, not now. Physically, how often do you need to eat to live? You know. So think about it. Now, so also you need words from the mouth of God to live. Brothers and sisters, that's why Jesus gave us that command where breaking of bread is concerned. So on that day, he took bread and wine and he told his disciples, take eat. This is my body that was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He says, take this wine, drink all of it. This is the blood of the new covenant. Drink all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And Paul admonished us that often as we do this, we are showing, we are showing that the Lord died. If the Lord died, brothers and sisters, why would you still have to die? If the Lord have paid for you, why would you still have to pay? You know why you're paying? Because you're not keeping his law. You are not keeping his law. What is his law? He gave us a law to break bread. Now, why do we break bread? We do so. It is not halal break a shefekete. Listen to me. Listen to me. The reason we break bread is because we are different. The moment we take that bread, it's not a religious thing. You know, I, I have to, no, 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 no. It opens up the gates of the ministry of Jesus. There is no other person that came with that ministry of breaking of bread but Jesus. No. So you think we are just taking wine and bread, some on level bread, some. You, know, you think it's that thing. No, no, no. When we take that thing, there is something working in our minds. As I'm taking that thing, I know one thing. Jesus died for me. Yes. But beyond him dying for me today, he owes me that ministry of life. Yeah. So when I take that bread, I'm saying, I'm a candidate of life today. So I open my heart to receive fresh words from him, even today. Lord, you know, you're going to guide me by your words. You're going to give me words to live by because I'm not going to die today. Praise God. I'm dying. I'm not dying today. Praise God. Oh, no, 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 no. Sickness cannot, cannot have me. No, 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 no. I, I can remain here. I know everything about me has to do with life. It is life from Jesus. It is the life that I live. I don't live by my flesh. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that spirit is in me. And by that spirit, my mortal flesh is quickened day by day. Because God ministers to the spirit of God in me. And as he ministers to the Holy Spirit that is in me, that I receive of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then I 
put those words the Holy Spirit gives to me into my mind. And then my mind is renewed. I refuse to think like every other person. I refuse to think like the world. And because I refuse to think like the world, I am not subject to the experiences of the world. For in the midst of the experiences that the world is going through, there is always a different path for me. Hallelujah. Why? Because I received life from Him. I received life from Him. Jesus is the one. So, so when in the midst of a storm, I can't be asleep, just like Jesus was sleeping in the boat. Why? Because the storm has nothing on me. Praise God. The storm has nothing on me. It, it can't come against me. No, it can walk against me. Pereti in no hope is lost. No hope is lost. Why? Anything can change at any moment. How is it going to change? Because I'm going to receive words from him. I'll receive words from him. Hallelujah. And as I receive those words from me, I believe them. And because I believe them, I begin to speak those same words. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands wherever you are listening and watching me right now? Because I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you are sick in your body, you're going to feel the anointing of God's Spirit even now. Even now. I told you something earlier. Gather your family together and break bread. Listen, you're going to see something supernatural happen in your life today. Gather your family together and break bread. And teach them these things. Oh, I'm not here with my family. Oh, do it alone then. Come on now, do it alone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As your hands are lifted up, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill everyone right now. Fill everyone right now. And let it be indeed a good Friday. I command the sickness to leave your body right now. I command every unclean thing in you to depart now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command cleanness over your life. Be free. Be free from every hold of Satan. Be free from every shackle of the devil. Be free now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I would like to hear from you if God has healed you. And then I will also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this message. Share it also, praise God, so that others will get blessed. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye.